welcome to a series called The End of Times, where we're going through the book of Revelation, verse by verse, to see what it is we could expect to happen, but more importantly, what it is we should be doing in the end times. And as we've gone through this book, we've hit a place in the book that, to be quite honest, made me pause. Um, I really didn't know how to proceed forward, uh, which is why I haven't we haven't had an end of times video in about two weeks. This is the first one in two weeks. It's the first time we went two weeks without one since this series began. Uh, but there, we're at a critical place where everything is changing. The wrath of God is complete. It is literally complete. There is no more wrath of God in existence. And to move forward at this point, we have to go back. Because I want to remind you, right after the seventh seal was broken, it says, when he opened the seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar, and he was given much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God in the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. There's silence in heaven for about a half an hour. And then all of a sudden, the trumpets start blasting, one by one by one by one. And the bowls of justice are being poured out onto the earth, one by one by one. And all those are complete, the seven trumpets, the seven bowls. And when we read that seventh trumpet, there was this pause in the story. And where we are right now? We're picking right back up where we left that pause off. So now that the wrath of God, there's this pause, this, this, this silence in heaven for a half hour. And then all the trumpets and all the bowls just be poured out onto the earth. And now it's silent again and all that's left is smoke. And we're just going to pick it up right there. In Revelation 19, starting in verse 1. After these things, I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication. And he has avenged on her the blood of the servants shed by her. Again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rises up forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who sat on their throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. Then a voice came from the throne, saying, Praise our God, all you his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sounds of many waters, and as the sounds of a mighty thunder, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. It's here. It's here. Everything we've read about from Genesis on, it's finally arrived. It's really, really one of the most beautiful moments in all of the Bible. This moment in time where from civilization, the suffering, the wars, the death, the famines, everything, the, the persecution of the saints, not just us in the end times, but all of the saints throughout, throughout history, the saints that are being persecuted in China, everything, all of their prayers, all of their tears, packed into this incense and just laid out before the Lord. And then the wrath of God is unleashed on the earth. Babylon is destroyed. The world has been darkened. A third of mankind has been killed by angels. And that's all over. It's all over. And now what you're hearing is you're hearing that blast of that seventh trumpet. It's what you're hearing now. It's a beautiful thing. The marriage. 
Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife, that's me and you, has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. So what you're seeing here is you're literally seeing after three and a half years of warring, of the saints warring, the remnant warring against the world, against the Antichrist and his world army, being outlaws for three and a half years. And then suddenly you start hearing trumpets blast and the wrath of God rains down on the earth. And then it's complete. And all those acts, all those acts that you performed, all those things that you did, the warring of the saints, standing up for God, maybe even having your head taken from you because you declared that Jesus is Lord. And that that guy, that guy's of Satan. All those things have adorned you in white. And now you're ready for the wedding. It's, it's the most beautiful part of the Bible we literally have reached. The most beautiful part because all the salvations that God has given, you know, throughout history for Adam and Eve, for Noah, for Abraham, for Isaac, for, the, for, Noah, uh, for Moses, for David, you know, all, for us, for you, for me, all those things, they, they involve suffering. They involve this, uh, this world. Save us from this world is what he always did, but now... It's, it's, the saving is complete. It's complete. There is no more saving to be done. It is literally completed this moment. And those who are prepared for the wedding are only the saints who have adorned themselves in beautiful white linen of the acts of the saints. After these things, I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power to the Lord our God. We're back in the throne room of God now. You know, for chapters, uh, I'd have to go back. The last time we were in the throne room of God, I believe was chapter 11. And now we're back. We're back into that throne room of God because there was that pause. That seventh trumpet declares the king has come. The wedding is ready. Is the bride ready? Was she a foolish bride? Did she not prepare and have the oil ready? Or was she a wise bride and was ready for the groom knowing he was coming? Maybe didn't know the hour. But we knew he was coming and we knew the season that we were in. And we knew that we had, we had to endure this war, that we couldn't turn sides because it's easy or it's convenient for three and a half years. And now there's just smoke. It's just darkness and smoke. And now we're back up in heaven. After these things, I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. Again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rises up forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. Then a voice from the throne, saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sounds of many waters, and the sounds of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia. For the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife, that's me and you ladies and gentlemen, has made herself ready and to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. I think this moment in time that we're looking at so beautiful it even makes me a little teary-eyed 
everything that God has done for us is coming to an end and just being wrapped up in a big old bow right then and there. It's a wedding. It's a literal wedding. You know, if you've been married, you know that everything changes after the wedding. You're together forever. The house that you build, the colors of paint that you pick on the walls, the raising of children, you're doing that together. And that's what this is. This is together. It's no longer he left and, and now we're waiting for him to return. It's together. You're getting ready to walk down that aisle and be with the Lord Jesus Christ forever. You haven't been cast out of the wedding. The doors haven't been shut and said, no, no, don't let anybody else in. No, you're not only at the wedding. You're the bride. Because you endured for three and a half years and you stood up for the things of Jesus Christ, you knew what was right. You knew what the word said. You knew that if anybody said, look in the temple, there's God. You knew, no, that's of Satan. That's the Antichrist. That is just like what Daniel wrote. The abomination, that is an abomination. And you chose that outlaw label. You chose that because you knew that, what, that that was wrong. And you knew that the word, what the word of God said. And you knew, hey, it's time to prepare for a wedding, ladies and gentlemen. But the world will prepare for the Antichrist. You know, they love their sexual immoralities. Um, and they'll probably love killing the saints too. But this moment in time, that gown you put on, that pure white gown, is made of the righteous acts of the saints. Hope these videos are helping. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. Feel called to support this channel with Patreon. That link is also below. But the most important part of this channel, we take prayer requests. So please don't ever hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.